Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Five Facts. I'm Tony Southcott and today we are taking a look at Saw. Saw is a 2004 horror film from director James Wan and writer Leigh Whannell. We cover a lot of cult classics on this and this one's not even really a cult classic, it's just a hit. Like, it has cult status now because of Jigsaw, because of uh, Billy the Puppet, because of all these other things. But really, this one is just a well-made movie. Not to mention it spawns seven other movies, the most recent of which is coming out tomorrow when this ends up being put up. Often lauded as torture porn, many people write off this series. I'd like to make it clear that the first film is a little bit different from that. It has elements of the torture porn, it has the traps, it has the violence and the gore. But a lot of these are subdued, and it's more about how humans react whenever they're put into a situation of adversity. You also do get to have some of the, like, the indulgent, gory things, but this isn't just a torture porn film. The series might devolve into that later, but right now it's in peak form. Anyway, on to the facts. Fact number one. Juan and Winnell came up with the idea for the cheapest possible premise they could pull off. James Wayne and Leigh Winnell were good friends at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology after finding out that someone finally shared their love of horror. They were used to seeing some really strange student art films. I think one of them actually said, you basically saw a nude woman with a plastic sheet over her for 10 minutes filmed on 8mm and it was supposed to be considered art. And then Leigh Winnell would come up with a movie called Zombie Apocalypse or something like that, and it was an actual zombie short film. Whenever they saw that they had this more in common than with their peers, they decided they were going to work together and they became friends. After they finished school, James Wan claimed that they faced the same existential crisis that all filmmakers face. Poverty. They just needed money to make a film, and they were working normal jobs. They were trying to figure out what they could do for $5,000. Following in the footsteps of Kevin Smith and Robert Rodriguez, the two were actually able to put some money together and make their short film. They used this short film as a way to get financing uh, to make the larger film. The short film was of the same title for Saw and basically had a very similar premise. They just turned it into a full-length feature for the normal film. Part of how they decided on Saw, though, was to have something that was in a bottle, just one set that would be really easy to produce. You have two guys, a gun, and a cassette recorder. It doesn't get very complicated beyond that. It's a lot of interaction, a lot of... Like, you also have the puppets and things like that, but it's a lot less money whenever you're just dealing with a set like that. Wan pitched the idea to Linnell, who ended up writing the script for it on the condition that he could call it Saw. Because that's basically how he saw it in his notebook. He wrote Saw in giant, like, 80s metal-style writing, and that kind of led to where the movie was. Fact number two. The character of Jigsaw came about because of migraine headaches. Leigh originally thought of the character when he was in a neurology ward for migraines. The headaches were so bad that he honestly thought that he had a brain tumor. While he was there, he saw people that did have that and began to wonder about his life, especially whenever he was in, a, in the MRI machine reflecting on life. He thought they were going to find a tumor. He thought about how he would spend his last days if he was told that he was indeed dealing with something like that. And basically it started going from there, because he got the idea, what would a psychotic person do with their last days? Like someone who's just completely off the wall crazy, knew they only had so much time left, what would they do to finish out their life? To anyone who's been in an MRI before, it's definitely a claustrophobic and terrible experience, especially if they're going for your head, or like your just upper body in general and you've got the thing right in front of you. I don't blame him for having some psychotic thoughts when in there, because that is just a straight up nightmare. Fact number three. Let's talk about Billy the Puppet for a moment. The puppet was entirely made by James Wan. It wasn't a store-bought puppet modified. It was actually something he crafted himself with paper mache and clay. In later movies, they would remake it with some better materials so that they could put more animatronics inside of it, have the eyes move, and things like that. The eyes in the original model were made from ping pong balls. Inadvertently, James Wan stumbled upon the perfect mascot for this franchise gone so far that there are even pop funkos of him. Though it is never referred to in the films, Wan and Leigh would now refer to the puppet as Billy. It's just been something that they've been doing since the beginning of this. I like I used to think that that was actually called Jigsaw, not the main killer. It was just a thing whenever I was young and dumber. The puppet was also partially inspired by Dario Argento's Deep Red film. Look at this creepy baby butler thing. Don't tell me that that didn't have anything to do with Jigsaw, especially since Jigsaw is always in a sort of tuxedo. Fact number four, 
Filming this movie was frantic and had no rehearsals. Having only five days of pre-production, the crew had to move incredibly fast. It took only 18 days from start to finish to actually get this movie done and cut. They were cutting it as they went. Because of the frantic pace, there were no rehearsals. The actors had to go, and any rehearsals were actually just the first takes of the film. While we're on the subject of filming, James Wan wanted a different feel for the character, so he used different techniques. For Adam, Leigh Whannell's character in the movie, all the shots from his perspective are done with handheld cameras that give a little bit more of a shaky movement feel, and this reflected his frantic state. Dr. Gordon is a much cooler character. It's part of being a surgeon where you're just a calmer type of person. And whenever he's on there, they actually have steady cam and more framed in things for him. The character of Amanda, played by Shawnee Smith, was only there for a single day. That included her getting her head rigged up for the trap, her having to dig through another person, her being interviewed by the cops. All that was done in just one day. Danny Glover, who actually does have a pretty prominent role in this movie, was only on set for two days as well. Also, there are no exterior shots in this film, because the production team couldn't afford them. In fact, in the entire series, there are very few outdoor shots, and only one trap that's, con that's actually outdoors. Fact number five, popcorn facts. Whenever we have these, there's just a bunch of short little facts that I found interesting instead of one big fact. All the bathroom scenes were shot in chronological order to make the actors feel more like what the characters were going through. I very much like this decision, especially when it's done in a bottle. It's not like The Revenant where you have to travel huge distances and go back and forth and back and forth and just make it work in those ways. This is just straight up, you've got a couple days, get it done, and put, film it in chronological order. Next fact, James Wan took a gamble on a no upfront salary for the movie and opted for a percentage instead. Considering that this was one of the most profitable horror movies of all time, he probably made out pretty well netted more than $103 million on a $1.2 million budget. After Amanda stabs her cellmate, she is seen searching with her hands through the guts. The guts are actually pig uteruses. And another weird fact about that scene, because some of that had to be reshot and the actors weren't available, whenever you see close-ups on the hand, that is actually Le Winnell doing his thing on screen. He also was a body double for Singh and some of the other characters whenever they were trying to get some reshoots and do it correctly. The movie that was shown at Sundance would go on to be rated NC-17. A few seconds of gore, as well as a lot of things done with lighting to make it more intense, ended up being cut from the film to make it rated R. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough that people noticed. Lastly, on the DVD commentary, Lewinell and James Wan talk about where some of the ideas for the traps and the scares came from for this. They said it was kind of a, a conglomeration of the nightmares that they had as children. I know I had a pretty messed up childhood and some weird dreams, so maybe it's time to put those on paper. So I wasn't a movie that I can dig into for some deeper metaphor, and it's not some great film masterpiece. It's not Suspiria, it's not any of those, but it is fun and it is brutal and it's psychological horror mixed with a lot of gore and put in this perfect little package. There are times where the acting is uneven or the premise seems far-fetched, but that's most of horror. What I admire most about this film is the dedication and care put into making it. I had the chance to talk to Lewinell briefly at a film festival and attend one of his panels. In it, he talked about how he's done the big budget picture, how with Dead Silence and some of these other ones that it just didn't, like, it didn't feel right. There was just too much happening. That he would rather make the beginning gritty movie of a series. He would rather make Terminator 1 than Terminator 2. And it really shows with this. If that's the bar of success for him, then he definitely nailed it. This is a movie that spawned so many other movies. He hasn't been involved with all of them, but with some of them. And he definitely started it up as this short little thing that turned into something huge. I also like that James Wan has branched out into other types of directing. He's doing the new Aquaman and he did Furious 7. He's a very good visual director, and I like seeing him be in other things. I hope that he doesn't forget his roots, and I hope he stays with horror so he can make more stuff like Insidious, The Conjuring, Saw. All of these movies that have been very good. I can honestly say that I recommend Saw, even if you are a bit squeamish and have to look away. The sequels might not be to your taste, but get a feel for this. Let Tobin Bell's voice take you into Jigsaw's world for a little bit. Suspend your disbelief and just go on this roller coaster and really check it out. Thank you all for watching another edition of Five Facts. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe, share it with your friends. Patreon.com slash Human Echoes. We will see you next week with another bonus five facts for October. We're going to be talking about the original Halloween movie. You guys have a good one.